Today I'm going to talk about Knight Rider. First, we're going to take a look back at Rebecca Holden, the actress who came in during season two and played April Curtis. And then I've got a couple surprises for you. And following that, I've got a top ten list that you definitely will not want to miss. All right, let's get rolling. Spoiler alert, folks. Before I even get started, I'm going to tell you that Rebecca is still around and doing a ton of great things. That said, her life has had a few twists and turns that are definitely worth talking about. So where should we start? Well, let's go all the way back to the early 70s. Back then, Rebecca, who by the way is a classically trained pianist, she'd made it big as a model. She was featured in a ton of really big gigs. Quite frankly, she was everywhere in both print media and television, but she was probably most visible as one of the Brett girls. And I can see why. This lady really does have some awesome hair. This feature, by the way, would become a huge asset to her career in the late 70s and early 80s as hair, or big hair I should say, seemed to be everything. The bigger the hair do, the bigger the star back then. Thankfully things have changed a bit. They have, right? Anyway, like many high profile models in the 70s, Rebecca was able to successfully parlay her modeling career into acting roles. I specifically remember her in The Love Boat and Magnum P.I. However, a quick peek at Ms. Holden's TV filmography tells me that she was in a whole lot more. Shows like Happy Days, Three's Company, and Barney Miller stand out on the vast list of guest appearances. However, Rebecca really caught my attention when she joined the television show Knight Rider during Season 2 as April Curtis, Kit's chief technician. Now, I've already dedicated an entire video to the Season 2 switcheroo. I think it's pretty good, so if you'd like more detail on why Rebecca replaced actress Patricia McPherson, albeit temporarily, click on the card at the end of this video. When Rebecca didn't return for Season 3, I've got to say that I was truly disappointed. I had become a fan of her character, and I would have liked to have seen April Curtis at least return from time to time throughout the remainder of the show's run. After Knight Rider, Rebecca continued to act, but the frequency of her appearances seemed to slow down just a bit. Even so, an avid TV viewer was able to see her on shows like Mike Hammer, Matt Houston, and Remington Steele. Rebecca also made semi-regular appearances on the daytime soap opera General Hospital in the late 80s. She also made a couple of feature film appearances, the most notable of which is a Roger Corman so bad it's good sci-fi post-nuclear epic titled The Sisterhood. Always a kind and caring person, Rebecca also became more involved in volunteer work. She donated her time and talents to causes that she believed in, especially when those causes involved children. This picture from the late 80s documents an appearance by Holden at a National Youth Services event. The caption below the picture points out that Holden traveled to the event at her own expense. What kind of celebrity does that? Well, apparently this kind of celebrity does. By the time the early 90s rolled around, it seemed like Holden just kinda disappeared. What happened? Well, truth be told, Life happened. Recognizing that above all else family comes first, Rebecca left her life of fame and fortune behind and went back home to Texas to help a family member recover from a health setback. Although her primary concern was that family member, Rebecca still found time occasionally to act in a play or make an appearance. In addition to being a phenomenal pianist, she also released a couple of country songs in 1989 that had both cracked the top 100. From what I understand, Rebecca's favorite of the two is The Highway Runs Both Ways. And once you know it, you can watch it right here on YouTube. Rebecca relished those moments where she was able to get back up on stage and just sing. It was a way to share her passion for life during a pretty darn difficult time. And more recently, Rebecca continues to sing. Her duet with Abraham McDonald titled Dreams Come True is simply amazing. I'll be shocked if this song doesn't become a popular choice for many weddings in the future. And Rebecca has never forgotten her time on Knight Rider. She seems to truly relish that particular 
moment when she was on the show, and she's a frequent guest at various conventions celebrating the classic television program. You know, I absolutely love it when a celebrity embraces and appreciates a show that helped them gain fame. As weird as it seems, oftentimes instead of acknowledging and appreciating a show, actors and actresses will attempt to distance themselves from it as if they were somehow now above it all. Well, I'm glad to see that Rebecca recognizes the truly pivotal role that Knight Rider played in her life. And she continues to do volunteer work. According to Wikipedia, more recently, Rebecca has been active with the relief organizations Operation California, with charity work in Ethiopia, and Operation Texas, which provides help to earthquake victims in Mexico City. Well done, Rebecca. Well done. Oh, and did I mention that she plays the piano for her local congregation each Sunday? Yep, just another amazing thing that Rebecca does. And if that weren't enough, Rebecca's got a new faith-based movie coming out soon titled Canaan Land that looks quite promising. All right, that's it. One last picture. What a lovely lady, inside and out. By the way, the handsome gentleman next to her is the creator of Knight Rider and Battlestar Galactica, Mr. Glenn A. Larson. He's no longer with us. Rest in peace, Glenn. Rest in peace. You couldn't be there when little Michael Knight took his driving test for the sixth time. Sundstrom, welcome to another video celebrating entertainment from decades gone by. You know, the good stuff. Knight Rider was originally broadcast on NBC from 1982 to 1986 and starred David Hasselhoff as Michael Knight, a high-tech modern crime fighter assisted by Kit, an advanced, artificially intelligent, self-aware, and nearly indestructible car. The show also starred Edward Mulhare as Devin Miles, the leader of a secret crime-fighting organization that Michael worked for, and Patricia McPherson as Bonnie Barstow, Kit's chief technician. Over the course of four action-packed seasons, Michael and Kit wowed television audiences worldwide. All right, now without any further ado, let's get rolling. Fact number one. The character of Michael Knight was originally known as Michael Long, a cop who was shot and left for dead. Recovered by Wilton Knight and Devin Miles of Knight Industries, Mr. Long then undergoes reconstructive plastic surgery and is given a second chance at life, joining Knight Industries by donning a new face and a new identity. He is Michael Knight, the Knight Rider. Fact number two. According to his memoir, Don't Hassle the Hoff, David said that the competition for the role of Michael Knight was pretty darn fierce and among the actors testing for the role was Don Johnson. And while I'm sure that Don would have made a fine Michael Knight, I for one am very glad that ultimately the producers went with David. Fact number three, because David is a rather tall fellow measuring in at six foot four, he had a height requirement for Michael's romantic interest built into the contract. Yep, certain actresses never even got a chance to be charmed by the mysterious Michael Knight just because of their height. Fact number four. 
kit, which is short for Dyna Industries 2000, was a customized 1982 Pontiac Trans Am. The car maker who supplied all of the vehicles for the series found itself swamped with customer requests for black Firebird Trans Ams with T-tops, tan interiors, and red lights on the bumper, just like the show. Fact number five is the kit has a roving red sensor on its hood. This defining characteristic of kits was inspired by another Glenn A. Larson program, Battlestar Galactica. Not only did it look like the Cylon's roving eye from that show, but it also made the same exact sound. Fact number six is that the actress who played Kit's mechanic, Bonnie, Patricia McPherson, was fired after the first season of the program and replaced with Rebecca Holden to add more sex appeal to the show. While he certainly didn't have anything against Rebecca, David Hasselhoff was unhappy with the way that Patricia had been treated and lobbied the producers to hire McPherson back. Because of his efforts, Patricia returned for the program's third and fourth seasons. Fact number seven, although widely believed to have never appeared on screen during an episode of Knight Rider, William Daniels, the voice of Kit, does appear briefly in the pilot episode as an uncredited car thief. Daniels recorded his lines as Kit on his days off from St. Elsewhere, where he played Dr. Mark Craig. For whatever reason, Daniels' name never appeared in the credits during Knight Rider's entire four-year run. Fact number eight. Knight Rider car stuntman Jack Gill said that the studio got their extra cars from Pontiac for just a buck apiece, but that the car maker would often give the studio vehicles that had already been damaged in one way or another from things like train derailments. The only car that Universal had to pay full price for was the actual hero car. Fact number nine, in 1984, Hooray for Hollywood was a two-part episode of Different Strokes where David Hasselhoff and Kit rescued Arnold Jackson and his buddy Dudley from a near-onset incident while visiting Universal Studios Hollywood. You know, I love that smile on Gary's face. I truly wish things had turned out differently for him. Fact number 10 is that although Michael's evil doppelganger Garth Knight was a fan favorite, David did not love playing dual roles. And for that reason, we only got two episodes with Garth in them, which was exactly the same number of appearances of Kit's evil doppelganger, Carr. Coincidence? I think not. All joking aside, though, I would have loved to have seen more of both Carr and Garth during the show's four-season run. Did you watch Knight Rider during the early 80s? If so, please share your memories in the comments section, and while you're at it, I'd love a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And I would be absolutely honored if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and mostly TV from decades gone by. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.